Do you have a closet full of clothing and still feel like you have nothing to wear? Or maybe you just have a hard time putting together outfits or you're looking to create sort of a capsule wardrobe of sorts where everything sort of works together. In today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my top 15 tips to have a wardrobe that actually works for you and have an easier time putting together outfits and finally feel like you actually wear all of the clothing that you have. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Alithia. I would love if you consider subscribing on this channel. I do focus a lot on organization, a little bit of minimalism and a little bit of self-care stuff as well. So with that out of the way, you guys, let's get started in today's video. My first tip is going to sound a little bit boring, but this is to buy all of your clothing for the most part in neutrals. And a lot of people think that this makes for a really boring wardrobe, but the reason I love purchasing everything in neutrals is because this way everything matches with everything else. I do like a little pop of color here and there, but for the most part, I stick to beiges, ivories, creams, tan colors, and a lot of white. And over the years, I've just kind of learned what works for me. And I like having a wardrobe where I can literally grab pieces from any part, no matter whether it's bottoms or tops, and they all work together. So my first tip is to purchase all things in neutrals. Tip number two is to add a few pieces here and there that actually add a pop of color if that's something that you like. But I don't mind wearing a pop of color here and there. For the most part, I am drawn to pastels and neutral tones. Even when I'm shopping online at places like Zara or Aritzia, if I see an all kind of neutral pastel toned outfit or like an all beige outfit, my eye immediately goes there as opposed to loud prints and loud colors. So part of it is personal preference, but also I know that if I was to buy these pieces that are louder or have brighter colors, I'm going to have a harder time mixing and matching them with not only the rest of my wardrobe, but also with shoes and handbags and things like that, even the color of my nails. But sometimes I do like adding a pop of color here and there, and I find that I really like red, a little bit of green, like a true neutral emerald green, or a little bit of a true neutral yellow. I'll talk more about colors in a moment and knowing what colors to get for yourself. Tip number two is just to add a pop of color here and there if that's something that you like. Tip number three is to know what colors flatter you. So you can do things like color analysis tests online to see what your color season is or what your undertone is. Or if you're like me, you can just ask yourself, what colors and shades do I feel the best in? Chances are you already know off the top of your head what colors really work for you and what colors you really don't like. For example, I know that I look better in pale muted tones like a pastel blue or a pastel pink versus deep saturated purple or deep saturated navy blue or something like that. I also know that I look better in light gray than dark gray. I know that I look better with lighter colors toward my face and darker colors toward the bottom. And I didn't do a color analysis to know this, but it sure helps when you're ordering clothing online or when you're trying to figure out what outfits you might want to bring on a vacation or for a night out or something like that. Over time, you do start to learn and develop what colors and what shades and tones look best on you, chances are it's just what you feel best in. If you look at your wardrobe and you ask yourself, what are my most worn pieces? And then just take a mental note of that. You're probably going to notice trends in your wardrobe, like most things being beige or most things having a little bit of pink to them, or the things that you like to wear the most having certain undertones or certain colors to them and take a mental note because this will really help you when you're shopping in the future and help you avoid some pretty expensive and failed purchases. The next tip is how you organize your wardrobe. I find that when something is organized and well-maintained and visually pleasing to the eye, it's very easy to pick outfits and put them together. So I like to hang my clothes up from lightest to darkest and shortest to longest as much as I possibly can. And I also try to separate them into seasons. So I try to keep more of my like summertime bottoms toward the front and a little bit more of my longer, cooler weather toward the back. I keep my coats a little bit further to the back. And I also like to organize it in terms of the most worn clothing. So the things that I don't wear a lot, like cocktail tail dresses would go in the very back of my closet because I simply don't need to have a visual of those every day. I don't need to see them every day. What I do need to see when I'm putting together outfits are basic tops, basic bottoms, dresses, overcoats, sweaters, and things of that nature. So this is a tip that I sort of adapted from Marie Kondo. I probably don't do it hundred percent like Marie Kondo, but it was something that really was life-changing for me. And as opposed to having your clothes just sort of all over the place, having a hard time finding them, it's very easy when I look at my closet and I see, okay, all five pairs of my shorts are in the front. So organize your closet in whatever way makes the most sense to you. The next tip is one that I have learned over the years, unfortunately the hard way and through trial and error. And this is if you find an item that you love, 
that you know that you're going to wear over and over, or it's something that you've already worn quite a few times and it's still in stock, go back and get at least another one, maybe two, or maybe get the exact same thing in a slightly different color, but a color that still flatters you and that you're still going to like and will wear, preferably in neutral tones. Lucky for me, one time I actually purchased two of the same shirt because I loved it so much. This was many years ago. At the time, it seemed excessive, and I thought, do I really need both? But I loved it so much that I got it both in a light pastel blue and also in white. Those are two of my most worn shirts to date, and I'm so glad that I got two of them because I think if I would have gotten just one, it would have worn out completely the number of times that I have worn it. Nothing is worse than having a favorite garment and having something happen to that garment or having it wear out over time and not being able to find a replacement. We all have our favorite t-shirt, our favorite pair of jeans, our favorite pair of pajama bottoms, our favorite cashmere sweater. And unfortunately, if you only have one of those things, you're going to wear it on repeat and no matter how good the quality is, eventually things do start to become discolored. They start to get frays and snags in them. The armpits become stained. They start to stretch out or wear out with repeated washings. Um, and eventually they're just going to fall apart. That's just the nature of clothing. I've also had my washing machine randomly eat one of my favorite t-shirts before. So my tip is if you find something that is perfect, the color is perfect, the cut is perfect, uh, the shape, everything about it makes you feel good. It's comfortable and you love it. Get at least two of them. The next tip is to know your most flattering silhouettes and know what cuts of clothing work for you. For example, for me, I know that I look better in a crew neck or a v-neck than in a boat neck or a cowl neck or a turtleneck. You'll never see anything in my wardrobe that is a boat neck, a cowl neck, or a turtleneck. Back in the day, I used to be really influenced by other people's fashion and I would think that I needed a certain type of cowl neck sweater or something because I saw it on someone else and it looked really nice on them, but they would never really work for me. I couldn't figure out why I didn't like that piece of clothing. And then I learned that it's all about cuts and your body shape and what flatters you the most. And so these days, if I'm ever shopping online and I see an outfit I like, always look at the neckline. I always look to see, is it going to be too tight? Is it going to come up too high on my neck? Is it too wide? Another example is that when it comes to dresses, I look better in a skinnier strap over a wide strap. I also prefer when the top part of my body is minimized a little bit and the volume is on the lower half of my body. So one thing you're going to see in my closet is a lot of A-line skirts and A-line outfits, flowy shorts and items that are skinnier in the waist and then flow away from the body. The exception being the odd pair of skinny jeans. Look at your wardrobe. Look at your most frequently worn pieces. Do a little experiment. Put them in piles of things you love to wear and things you don't reach for. And then ask yourself, what is it about this item that I love? And look at the neckline, look at the tones and the colors and the shades, look at the cut, and then see if you can find patterns as to what flatters your body the most. It's going to make a big difference when you go shopping or when you're trying to curate your wardrobe. You're going to know what you can get rid of or pass on because maybe that neckline doesn't work for you. And you're going to know what you can hold on to and what you should maybe stock more of. The next tip is similar to point number one, but it is to have items that can be easily mixed and matched. So whenever I purchase items, I always ask myself, is this an item that I'm going to be able to work with other things in my wardrobe? For example, if there's a beautiful sweater that I want, I ask myself, okay, I love the sweater, I like the look, but do I actually have anything in my wardrobe that it's going to go with? And I always try to get a piece that I can use with multiple things. So that one V-neck sweater, perhaps I can pair it with a pair of skinny jeans, but I could also pair it with a few of my skirts. So as long as I know that I can create multiple outfits, it's probably going to be a pretty safe buy. And I always try to get items that can be mixed together interchangeably, and it's going to be relatively easy to create an outfit. The next tip is in regards to your shoes, and you guessed it, it is to buy all of your shoes as well in neutral colors. This would be earth tones, skin tones, black, white, or metallic. I have every type of shoes you can think of. I've got pointy toe pumps, high heeled sandals, low heels, mid heels, flats. I've got occasion shoes, sneakers, and boots and every single item is in a neutral color. This way, no matter what my outfit is or what the occasion is, I have a shoe that I know will go with all of my outfits and I never have to worry about is it going to work or not. 
I allow small features on my shoes to add interest like straps, maybe cap toes, little embellishments, or even a classic red bottom, but the rest of the shoe is neutral. I also never need to worry about matching my bag to my shoes because I know that all of my shoes are going to go with all of my bags. For example, maybe you have an outfit that calls for a wedge sandal or a high heel sandal of some sort, but the only high heel or wedge sandal you have happens to have some sort of a color on it that doesn't go with the rest of your outfit. There's nothing worse than you're stuck wearing a pair of shoes that doesn't really go with the vibes, but you had to wear it because the color was better or you needed to wear something that would match your bag a little bit better. It's just easier at the end of the day when everything from head to toe is cohesive and neutral. You don't ever have to worry about your shoe not working. So I sort of already touched on this before, but the next tip is to let the interest be in the details. So this would be ruffles, mixed media items, pleats, or different textures. Those kind of things are enough to make you feel stylish and avoid boredom. It's not necessary to wear bright, saturated colors, loud prints, and other things that are super exciting and super flashy. You can actually let the details really amplify the outfit. So a lot of things you're gonna see in my closet are different types of fabrics, different textures. I've got lace, I've got lots of pleated skirts. I've got a couple of mixed media items where they're made of two different types of fabric. It just adds a little bit of visual interest. And I also really like mixing and matching the type of fabric and the textures. And then of course, little details like little embellishments in your shoes or things like that can also add some visual interest, but because they're all neutral, they still work together. It's kind of like designing a living room. You can have lots of different pillows as long as they're all sort of working together in the same color family, they can all have different textures and different embellishments and parts that make them special. But overall, the color scheme is still the same, if that makes sense. So try to dress yourself the way you would dress a living room. <laughs> The next tip is to switch out your handbag, jewelry, or shoes to completely change the look of your outfit. So I use this a lot of times when I travel because when my boyfriend and I go away, we go away for maybe three or four days and I only ever bring a carry-on. I don't want to have to check luggage. So I like outfits that work for different occasions. So you can literally take the same outfit and during the daytime you can wear it with sneakers, but then at nighttime when you go out, you can throw on a pair of high heels and maybe just grab a clutch instead of your day bag and maybe throw on a piece of jewelry and you've taken your look from daytime to a little bit more dressed up for nighttime. So I have lots of outfits in my wardrobe that I can literally wear them with every single handbag and every single shoe in my closet and switching out the bag and the shoe completely changes the look and the vibe of the outfit. Tip number nine is instead of having everything in your wardrobe be something unique and interesting, let your finishing touches do the switching for you. This again speaks to the importance of having things in your wardrobe that can be mixed and matched and also things being all neutral. The next tip is to have a uniform. So a uniform is a go-to outfit that you know if you put it on, it's going to work every time and you're going to feel good in it. And the pieces of the uniform can easily be switched out to create something different if you get tired of that look. Some of the most successful people in history have had uniforms, meaning they wore the exact same thing every single day. They just had multiples of them in their wardrobe. One of these people would be Steve Jobs. He always wore a black top and a pair of pants and they were always the same color. And that was what he put on day in and day out. I believe Barack Obama did the same thing. And what this does is this reduces decision fatigue. So when you're getting dressed in the morning, you don't have to put as much effort or thought into thinking what am I gonna wear what's gonna go together and then you spend like half an hour putting on outfits only to realize that none of them really work and you can't decide on a shoe and you can't decide on a bag having a, a uniform like a basic staple guide is so much easier so for example you could have your basic everyday uniform like I like to do um, I love wearing a skirt and a t-shirt a long sleeve t-shirt um, it's just comfortable it goes well together my arms are always covered up I tend to get chilly during the day the top is the perfect silhouette for me it flatters my physique it's got the right neckline they're all white so they go with all of my skirts and then all I have to do is switch out my bottom and that for me is a really easy go-to uniform. Nine times out of 10, if you see my photos on Instagram of outfits of the day, a lot of times it's just a long sleeve t-shirt and a skirt, and I just have different variations of them. The next tip is in regards to your socks. And this is 
to buy all of your socks the same color and preferably exactly the same print. So for myself, I have resorted to just all white socks, but I always try to keep whatever socks are in my current sock wardrobe, I always try to keep them the exact same sock. This makes it so much easier, not only when you're deciding what socks to put on for the day, you're guaranteed that they're going to match all of your outfits because a white sock pretty much goes with everything. It also makes doing laundry a lot easier. I know this is a huge pet peeve of mine when I do my boyfriend's laundry because he has lots of different brands and different colors of socks and it just takes so much longer. It's like playing a game of like memory, trying to figure out what sock goes with the other sock and putting them together and there's usually always in the end two socks that are mismatched anyways and they have to go together and that just looks ridiculous when you wear them. So my tip is just to apply the same principle to your sock, buy the same sock, buy it all in the same color, preferably with no print or the exact same print if there is one. The next tip is in regards to your bras. So I suggest that you get all of your daily, day-to-day -day bras that you wear on a regular basis in a skin tone consistent or close to your own skin tone. The reason for this is that they're going to be invisible under clothing. Again, it reduces decision fatigue. You never have to guess what bra am I going to wear, what bra is going to go okay with this shirt. Um, get bras that are comfortable, that give you the support, that give you the silhouette that you like, and stock up on those ones and always make sure that they are nude or neutral. It doesn't mean that you can't have fun, exciting, like racier, intimate wear for those kind of occasions. Definitely have a place in your drawer reserved for those types of more fun items. So if you look at my drawer, most of what I have is neutral, but for the most part, nine times out of 10, I always grab for a neutral nude skin toned bra. The next tip is in regards to your outerwear, specifically your coats. So I would say invest more effort and maybe even a little bit more money into selecting your coats and your jackets. Most of the time when you go out to do anything, whether you're getting groceries, running errands, People aren't even going to see the outfit that's underneath. You are not even going to be paying much attention to the outfit underneath. But what you will be seeing in the mirror as you walk around, what you're going to be presenting to the world is your coat. So people are always going to see your coat. Not that I'm saying you have to care what people think, but if you want to feel polished and put together, your outerwear also has to be workable and stylish for you. So I have different types of coats in my wardrobe. I've got my one sort of like park parka puffer style jacket that is super warm and I use it for walking the dog in the winter. I have a couple of coats that are like a wool blend that are just a very smart looking coat that I can throw on for an evening out or a casual day in the spring, summer, or fall. I have a smart looking trench coat that again is in a neutral nude color. And then I also have one sort of like warmer winter jacket that isn't a parka. So it looks a little bit more stylish and put together for those cooler winter days. So because I live in Canada, I have to have a wider variety of outerwear, but depending on where you live, you might only need one or two coats. You might need like a casual, comfortable daytime coat and a smarter, more sophisticated nighttime coat or something like that. The next tip is in regard to the quality of the items you're choosing. So my tip is to opt for higher quality pieces overall when you can, because well-made garments with quality fabric will stand the test of time and wear out less quickly, so you can actually maximize your wardrobe potential. There's nothing worse than loving an item, like I said before, only to have it fall apart in a few washes. Two of my favorite places to get clothing are Everlane for basic tops like my favorite t-shirts, and Aritz Abercrombie and & Fitch and other stores like that for more affordable, good quality pieces like shorts, dresses, skirts, and jeans. I also have a guilty pleasure for Zara because I love all of their fun designs that they come up with and I really love fashion but their quality can be hit and miss and their sizing is not always reliable. So when it comes to certain pieces, I really like Zara, but when it comes to certain other pieces, I prefer something a little bit higher quality and that isn't so like fast fashion, if you know what I mean. I also really enjoy shopping at higher end department stores like the Hudson's Bay or Nordstrom, although Nordstrom is no longer available in Canada, um, but because they have a larger selection and you're almost guaranteed to find good value. And finally, my last tip is to stock your closet according to your lifestyle. For example, if you work in an office, then obviously you're going to need more office, professional, smart looking, maybe office casual, business casual type of clothing. If you're a stay at home mom, you're obviously going to need more loungewear and active wear. If you go out to a lot of dinner parties or special occasions, then you're obviously going to need more evening clothing and going out clothing. 
Try to customize your wardrobe according to your lifestyle, not according to what you love. So for me, for example, I used to have a really bad habit of buying a lot of dresses, like going out dinner dresses, evening dresses. But the reality is I don't go out that often. And I've just kind of become more of a homebody these days, but we still do like to go out for nice dinners here and there. And when we go on vacation, of course, we go out for dinner every night. So I like to dress up nice. But the reality is I just don't need tons of cocktail dresses. I don't need tons of formal like occasion wear. Um, they just don't get worn that much. So I recently went through my wardrobe and got rid of a whole bunch of my dresses. And what I did was I focused more on loungewear. I recently purchased a lot more leggings and bra tops and long sleeve t-shirts because we recently got a dog. And so I'm spending a lot more time walking outside than I ever used to. So I had to invest in like sun protection and more leggings and put my focus more toward like outerwear and active wear. So really try to ask yourself, where do you spend most of your time and where do you need to invest most of your energy when it comes to purchasing things for your wardrobe and designing your capsule? So that is it, you guys. Those are my top 15 tips for creating a wardrobe that works for you and for designing more of a utilitarian, functional wardrobe that is still stylish, that's going to feel like you. You're going to have an easy time choosing what you're going to wear. You're going to feel fabulous every time you leave your house. So I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions, let me know down below. You can also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram. And if you want to see more clothing-related content like hauls or staple pieces or where I get certain pieces or just putting together outfits for you guys and showing you like what I like, um, let me know down below as well. Thank you so much for being here with me today and I'll see you all very soon in my next one.